Hello, and welcome to your spiritual journey. Right now, your soul is speaking to you. I'm Jenny Israel, and I'm a medical intuitive, energy healer, spiritual activator, counselor, and teacher. It is my mission to help you learn the tools you need to heal your life and discover your deeper purpose. In each episode, I will allow spirit to speak through me, and we will explore energy forecasting, teach you how to raise your vibration for overall wellness, increase your emotional intelligence to open up joy in your life, and guide you into spiritual evolution using topics such as energy healing, emotion code, sacred geometry, numerology, tarot, crystals, channeling, and much more. Take a deep inhale, let it out, and listen to your soul speak to you. Hi everybody, happy 2021. I have been absent for a while, feels good to be back. I think we all kind of needed some time to lay low and regroup after the hustle and bustle of the holiday season and the last few months of the year. Just all of that amazing eclipse energy (laughs) that we were all swirling inside of and then ending the year with the great conjunction energy which was so fascinating to me uh, to hear all the different perspectives of this amazing alignment of planets that we have not experienced in our living history those of us who are on this planet now so moving into this year I had a lot of people asking me questions and for those of you who who follow me especially on Instagram oh my goodness I think before I closed down for holiday vacation I think I may have done between three and five different interviews with different people and the questions were somewhat the same as far as what should we be looking at you know where where should our focus be for this incoming year and the the energies that we're inside of the way that the world is now which you know is is still in this really interesting space of almost a limbo where we're not sure what tomorrow is going to look like i mean I think today in inside of this conversation we're going to look at a lot of existential type of questions but I look back at some of the things that I was saying going into the last couple of months of the year and even going back to my the podcast that I did the the YouTube video that I did about the vibration of 2020 going into 2021 I encourage you to look back at it now because I'm I'm realizing that some of the things that I was talking about inside of that particular video, um, which was called 3D into 5D, well, what about the 4D? And I, I talk about the vibration of the four. I talk about its relationship to the year of 2020. And then I talk about the merge into the five vibration. And... 2021 is uh, in numerology is a five year and we started to look at that five vibration as we started to move closer towards the end of the year especially as we got past the 1111 portal you know I really there's also a podcast on that you can go back and listen to why I really felt so strongly that that 1111 gateway truly was ushering in the new year even though our traditional calendar, you know, we don't celebrate the new year until January 1st, I did really have a very strong feeling that on a spiritual and energetic level that our new year really began with the the 1111 portal and that we really started to see the building of the five energy coming in and then this really presented itself I mean as we started to get into the eclipse season energy you know towards the end of November into December we really started to see this take place and so I'm not going to spend a lot of time recapping in this particular podcast. I'm just going to get right into it. But if you are interested, please go back and take a look at some of the previous videos uh, that and podcasts that were loaded in uh, towards the end of the year, particularly the 3D to 5D 
the 1111 gateway and the soul tribe Saturday that I did with Charlene Lawrence uh, when we talk about some of the eclipse season energy so what have I been receiving for 2021 well I have to admit that the last couple of weeks for me as I had committed to going into a space of just kind of releasing social media releasing you know my connection in a visible way I I just had this desire to cocoon and to nest and to disconnect so I could reconnect with my family and reconnect with myself outside of my identity as a healer outside of my identity as a counselor and this is very difficult for me to do because it is so much of who I am that being disconnected from that role is a bit disorienting for me and I think it really brought some clarity for me to pull away from that because what's underneath it what when I'm not playing the role of the healer and I'm not playing the role as the counselor and the intuitive who am I and where is my center what meaning does my life have without that major role if I'm not playing that on a day-to-day basis this was a really interesting place for me to go and it was it was almost challenging for me to to even get on and and do another podcast I had this this desire to kind of stay below the surface to reemerge and kind of move back into the the tide of the the role that I play for so many got me to asking some really important questions and what I found was that these things that were coming up inside of me were really very clearly coming through from spirit as as not just messages for me but messages for what the incoming year could potentially bring for us and I haven't even sat down to listen to you know I know I've mentioned a couple of times that you know I have my my favorite channelers that I like to listen to but I haven't even had time um, to listen to what their messages were for the incoming year and you know, it was like yesterday I, I started to think, well, I, gosh, I really need to make time, you know, for myself to listen to those messages um, because I really need to hear them for me. And then I realized this morning, well, you know, perhaps, Jenny, you haven't been able to connect to that yet because you need to be able to communicate the messages that you're receiving in a in a way that hasn't been infiltrated by outside information so even though I had to really push myself to to get into the the groove and and get my thoughts down in a way that I felt that I could clearly communicate uh, kind of where I am at and the things that have been coming through from spirit for me I I felt motivated to do it because I I wanted to get this out so then I could go and explore what others are seeing, what others are feeling. And I know that within my own little circles, my little posse that I have, I've been in contact with, you know, a few of my closest friends and, you know, the things that they're seeing, the visions they're getting. There has been some really uh, you know, I I hesitate to use the word disturbing because of the fact that the energy that that word has. But as a human, <laughs> a human being receiving visions that have that energy, you know, it, it it's an accurate word for me to use. Some from disturbing visions uh, about some of the things that are going on in our world. That I'm, you know, I'm not really going to get into that subjectively. You know, it it is interesting when spirit sends images and visions because we're never quite sure exactly how to interpret it but what I did take away from these visions is I was getting validated by some of my very close friends who were receiving similar information 
is that we're going into a time of very clear polarity, very clear duality, getting to see our lives and our world in a brand new way. And this has a lot to do with the energy of the five. Uh, moving into 2021, the, the vibration of the five has a lot to do with information, uh, communication, truth, the discovery of truth, the gathering of truth, the resonation, the the resonance of truth. And when I talk about resonance of truth, it that's definitely more on an individual level because we all have a different resonance of truth based on our previous experience and the information that we've gathered and the filters that we view our information and knowledge through. It, we all have a different perspective on truth because it's ours. But I think where things, you know, we've been talking about this, the merge into unity consciousness, which is part of the age of Aquarius, which a lot said that the great conjunction ushered in officially on December 21st on our solstice. And the age of Aquarius, as I've mentioned before, is about the recognition of our God self the recognition that we are all connected, that I am you and you are me. And that inside of that, the old vibration of power structure that has been so unbalanced for so long, which is the the rush to get a piece of the pie because there's not enough for everyone. And that you are only here to take from me. That I must be in competition with you. That I must be more powerful than you. That I must be better than you inside of this scale of measurement and comparison. Instead of in unity consciousness, we understand that we're all different. And that's a beautiful thing and, and that we, we revel in that the, and that there's balance and harmony in the fact that we each bring this beautiful, unique vibrational signature to the tapestry of our world, but that together we all sing the same song, which is what universe means. You break that word, word down, it means one song. And so as we move into this vibration of the five for 2021, we're seeing an opportunity to move into a space where we really do start collecting new truth and accessing new levels of information that potentially were not visible to us before. Trying to figure out new ways to communicate this information. And we have to remember that a very important aspect of communication is not just our turn to speak. It's about receiving. It's about receiving information. And how well are you really listening? Inside of a world that has such extreme polarity and duality, we haven't spent a whole lot of time trying to figure out how to be in the middle of that. We are driven, especially by our media, into choosing sides and in a very extreme way. Instead of being able to consider the other side and consider their perspective and the information that's coming from the other side of the spectrum, from where we stand, we just continuously gather more information that supports our current position. Because it feels good. It feels good to surround ourselves with what we know and what validates our opinion and validates our truth. And there is importance in that because it does make us feel secure and it makes us feel safe. However, this new era is going to challenge us to see the other side and find a foundation of safety and security that is not threatened by that. Instead, that we welcome the opportunity to see things in a new way. This does require some level of destruction because in order to make space for these new truths to come in, we have to deconstruct some of our old belief systems and our old truths in order to 
give ourselves the chance to actually hear what another person is saying in a way that we give ourselves time to really think about it and consider it in a a non-biased way, which is, is very hard for the human ego to do. And so we're talking about a leap forward in our evolution of being beings of the third dimension, being extremely human inside of our egoic function to separate, to isolate, to compartmentalize and only pick and choose the things that feel good. But that doesn't that doesn't lead us into the middle. That doesn't lead us into that that gray area. And ultimately, what lives inside this gray area? Well, freedom. Freedom lives inside that gray area. And this, I believe, if I had to pick one word for 2021, it would be the vibration of freedom. And freedom can look lots of ways. And we have to look at the duality of freedom from the perspective of the microcosm inside of our own lives to the perspective of the macrocosm of what freedom looks like on a global scale. And depending on where you are geographically in the world, freedom looks very different. Freedom varies on government structures. Freedom varies on the um, access to materials, the access to information, the access to technology, to, you know, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that we have access to kind of gives us some sort of structure of how far we can take our exploration. So inside of our resources that we have access to, trying to figure out what freedom looks like and how far we can push our box open to take a real different look at our perspective on freedom. And gosh, we could talk for hours about this, this topic alone. But I think that I would like to focus on the aspect of our own personal freedom inside of the concept of mental entrapment. Now, I did talk about this quite a bit with a, a couple of the the ladies that interviewed me in December. And we talked about, as far as what we can do for ourselves, one of the greatest tools that you have access to is your own focus. What are you looking at? How are you looking at it? Where is your perspective on it? Which side of the spectrum have you chosen? If you are still in a place of attachment and significance, which most of humanity is, unless you're a living avatar and you've, <laughs> you've completely released human attachment, expectation and outcome, which I think that's, a, that's an ongoing evolution. It's a journey we're all in together inside of our human experience. To not have attachment is a, a very difficult level of existence to achieve. But where are you placing your significance? I use the example of just my children at any given moment of the day as my kids are expressing themselves within their current level of awareness and consciousness. As an adult, it's, you know, I have my own agendas. I have the things I want to accomplish in the day. I have the things I want to get done. You know, there's time that, you know, mommy just wants to be still and relax. (laughs) And my children's agendas are very, very different. And... I could choose in any given moment, just inside of that single struggle, to see it as suffering, where I am in my own personal suffering inside of that, which comes from the the end of, you know, the the martyring, um, more of that victim level, where I do everything for you, you know, why can't you just give mommy five minutes, Um, you know, you guys are exhausting, you know, that I could certainly take that perspective and I know every single person that's listening to this that is a parent can resonate with that because our kids require an exceptional amount of energy and in the the level of life that we all live let's face it we don't have a lot left to give and that's a whole other conversation for another day but I think that 
this all comes down to how we're choosing to see the moment. So are you in a place where you're, you're choosing to see it that way? Or are you looking at these little faces that are all over you and demanding your attention because the only thing, the only nourishment that they need in that moment is their mother's love and the simplicity and the purity of that looking into those little faces and seeing that at this age when they're small they are more capable of love at those young ages before they've grown into jaded adults like the rest of us who understand all the conditions of love where where in 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 moments like that are you choosing to place your your focus choosing to place your significance and I you know I talked about this I think especially with Kelly Lynn Adams my interview with Kelly Lynn Adams she she had asked me where what should we be doing and the two big things that I had said was pay attention to where your focus is are you focusing on the struggle or are you focusing on the joy the other thing that I said was get in your body and I hold on to these two things that I said to her in December because this is truly where we are going for 2021. The vibration of the five has a lot to do with head energy. And so in the gathering of information and how we're communicating that, we are going to spend a lot of time in the air realms, which is very connected to the mind. And I think that the challenge of this is to figure out how to ground ourselves inside of this uh, vortex that's that's around our our mental realm. And as we're in the search for truth, how do we digest that? And how do we ground it into our root chakra? How do we ground it into our lives? And so here we do see the polarity of being in those upper realms of the mind and really still making sure that we're vigilant in being inside of our physical bodies and nourishing our bodies, feeding our bodies, exercising our bodies, relaxing our bodies. You know, we we talked about this movement Again, you know, it's it's going back to these topics that were coming up towards the end of last year. So we were talking about radical self-care and what that meant. And it really meant honoring your physical form. And I think that especially in the, the spiritual circles, I think we forget about this. You know, it's it's like we almost want to detach from our humanness, right? Because that's how we evolve. We evolve into this ethereal state where, you know, we have no connection, you know, as to our attachments anymore, that we've, we've become emotionally detached. We've become neutral. All of those lessons in, in the evolution of our, of our soul, having a human experience. And it's almost like we cut ourselves in half. I can't tell you how many clients I treat that have this problem where it's like they've severed themselves in the center of their bodies and that their lower level earthbound chakras are suffering greatly because they're being ignored and they're not being honored the way that the upper spiritual level chakras are being honored. And we have to understand that moving into this unity consciousness and seeing ourselves as a whole, that we have to see our bodies that way too. And I think that, you know, this is where we have to look at this construct of, of freedom and what the other side of that, how are you trapping yourself inside of your constructs of truth? What limitations have you set for yourself? What kinds of mental entrapments have you captured yourself within because you're not fully paying attention inside the moment to what you're choosing? I know everyone can relate to this. I certainly can. I uh, My mind is my worst enemy at times where I can snowball so quickly into a place of, of feeling restricted, feeling trapped, trapped inside my routine, trapped inside of my life. And it's really easy to look outside of yourself and, and find a thousand reasons why you are trapped and why it's everyone else's fault. And therefore you are powerless inside of that situation to remove yourself from that place. When in fact, 
you're one choice away, one perspective shift away from freeing yourself in some way. And so these new levels of truth are going to be emerging through this year. I'm convinced of it. And as I laid in bed the other night, praying for my family and myself and the world and asking for my own healing, trying to empty my mind to find some peace because, gosh, my mind was so busy and so loud. It was like everyone was talking at the same time. And when I finally was able to calm everything down, I heard so clearly inside my head, Jenny, your goal going forward is to find a way each and every day to find meaning in your life. And this goes back to what I was saying about this time I needed to kind of move away for a moment from this role that I play, this identity that I'm so deeply entrenched in as the counselor, as the healer, to figure out outside of that identity, where does my life have meaning? And I found myself really struggling with that. In fact, it was... I, going into this place, and, and this was the, the statement that I heard, I'll, I'll finish it before I go on. It was, your goal is to find meaning for you and only you in each and every day. Because at the end of this journey, none of this matters, right? And, and we've all heard this existential comment, this, this existential truth that what we're doing here on earth inside of this physical life, you know, it, it we're all going to end up in the same place, you know, looking back on the things we've learned, you know, none of it really matters. This is a very precarious line to walk because that existential meaning of life can easily take someone into a place that says, well, if nothing matters, why should I get out of bed every day? What's the point? What's the point of fighting? What's what's the point of doing any of this? Well, if we go back to the whole reason why our soul came here in the first place, the meaning is inside of learning how to bring meaning, true joy into our everyday lives to evolve ourselves as far as frequency, and you guys know how I love to talk about frequency, into a higher vibration, a higher song, the song of the soul, the song of the heart, which sings out at a resonance of joy, forgiveness, love, compassion. It's the statement we so often hear of be the light, live by example, that that does matter and it makes a difference in the world and it makes a difference in your happiness. The pure joy of just getting out of bed in the morning to involve yourself in the personal meaning that you've chose. So this was a very profound moment for me because I was finding myself inside of that challenge of where is the meaning for me? outside of the fact that I am extremely grateful. Don't get me wrong. Every day I am grateful to be able to live in my purpose, in my soul mission. But on the converse side of that, it is how am I feeding myself inside of this as I'm constantly feeding others? Yes, my soul does get fed by the process of counseling and healing others. Absolutely. But the the real truth of that is that it can be a, a drain on my energy systems. And how am I serving myself and bringing meaning for my own personal life in order to continue to go on like this each and every day? And I think that this is the thing that we're all going to be challenged with many, many times in this year. As we're in our our search for our truth. It's not just a discovery of freedom, it's a fight. It's a fight for our freedom. And I think that we're fighting our own duality inside of this. It's, you know, we are, we're going into a place where we are discovering where we are blocking ourselves. 
where we have trapped ourselves, uh, where the choices that we have made have put us in a situation that doesn't feel so good. And choosing instead of going into a place where we are feeling guilty and we have regrets and resentments and we beat ourselves up, how, how could we allow ourselves to, to be in this place? Well, because there are lessons there. You had to go into the place that you are now because the discovery has to happen there in order for you to experience the duality of that situation and to move into a new polarity of what life can look like and what life can feel like and from a place of empowerment because you have made this discovery of self and you've made the discovery that at the heart of all of this you are responsible for taking back your power and making choices for yourself instead of continuously out, you know giving all of these things to everybody else it's like okay well i'm trapped because of my job when you you know people will probably say to you will go find a new job well it's not that easy well why is it not that easy is it because you've given yourself a bunch of reasons and you've you've told yourself or the, or the world has told you that it's not easy to go find another job? Well, why is your job hard? Are you engaging in the same kinds of relationships over and over again because you feel that you deserve that? You know, we can go deeper and deeper and deeper inside of this ideology, but in its simplest form, there are old limitations there are old limiting beliefs and there are old truth structures inside of potentially just on the subconscious level that are ruling your life and creating a box that you live inside of. And this new age, this new era of information, technology, knowledge, expansion, all of these things are going to be giving us an opportunity to really dig deep inside of ourselves to discover where we are entrapping ourselves inside of old belief systems, old constructs. And it's not an easy thing to do to go through the the deconstruction of identity, the deconstruction of old beliefs. But I I find myself again and again going back to the the Buddhist teachings. The I mean gosh, there's there's quote after quote um, about these kinds of things. I'll, I'll give you a couple right now. You can't calm the storm, so stop trying. What you can do is calm yourself until the storm passes. Again, it's about internal, internal calm. The mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. And when it's calm, everything becomes clear. Pain is certain. Suffering is optional. These are amazing ideologies because it reinforces again and again that peace comes within and the choice is yours. The human experience can be painful because when we are breaking ourselves down, it's like you go back to the, the symbol of the butterfly and it, it, the, the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, its entire body has to turn to goo. It literally has to completely break down on a structural level to turn into the butterfly. And so when you're inside that, that cocoon and that chrysalis and, and you're deconstructing and reconstructing, the pain is part of the process, but the suffering is a choice because of how you choose to view the situation that you are in. Again, a very fine line to walk because we are having a human experience and human emotion is part of this process. And respecting and honoring our emotions for what they are in the moment is also incredibly important in your healing process, especially for your physical body. And so meeting yourself where you are in that moment, the pain that you're experiencing calling it what it is, anger, grief, sadness, fear, and giving yourself space to just be in it 
And I think that that's where we lose our way is because we don't allow ourselves to go there and we don't allow ourselves to be inside of it, to, to call it out by name, to see it, give ourselves permission to be inside of it for as long as we need to be until we come out on the other side. And I think I've used this analogy on podcasts before, but, you know, it was in reference to parenting, you know, a, a small child who is nothing but a ball of emotional energy and they don't have tools to deal with it. So what do they do? They go into full meltdowns. They go into to temper tantrums. And the example that was given was the train going through the tunnel where you, you sit down with that child inside of that space and you don't try to negotiate out of it. You don't try to sidetrack them you you don't necessarily redirect them away from their feelings that you actually just sit with them inside of those feelings which is giving them permission to feel their feelings and sooner or later the train comes out on the other side and it's over and they've felt their feelings and they've processed the moment and then we redirect and we we start new and I think that there is a lot of this inner child emergence that's coming up for all of us right now, this deep shadow work that we've been in, you know, for months and months and months, um, discovering these these patterns inside of ourselves, um, where this inner child needs to emerge and be healed and be given the opportunity to go back to that time and, and be given the innocence that we deserved. A lot of us didn't have that. We were made to grow up too soon um, and we, we weren't allowed to just be kids to indulge our desires and, and our joy in that time and I think we're all being given an opportunity to do that now but we've got lots of cognitive behavioral stuff that's built up over decades of time that we need to be aware of and we need to kind of allow ourselves you know at times to go into these temper tantrums and process these big balls of energy and emotion that potentially have been blocking our ability to fully be in touch with our whole self. And so the calm within is in the center of the storm. And that, you know, the other one, I have it on my office wall, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning to dance in the rain. And so I do feel that this year of 2020 is going to have a lot of this duality of inside the storm, finding our peace. And this happens inside the mind that we have tools that are outside of us to to help guide us into potential methods of how we we come to peace within because it's going to be a little different for everyone as far as how you get there. But no one is going to give this to you. It's, it is a, a process of, of finding your own personal superpowers within for calm. But, you know, these tools that we're talking about inside of this podcast, as far as your focus, where you are placing your attention, how you are choosing to see every moment of your day, it becomes a question you can ask yourself, what am I choosing right now? And at any given moment, realizing that the ego is going to come to battle you in that and the ego is going to say, you're not choosing this. This has been thrust upon you. And in certain circumstances, there are things that happen to us that are completely out of our control. The choices we have as adults are very different than the choices that we had as children. And the adult version of yourself is stepping forward now and offering an extended hand to that small version of you and saying, let's set ourselves free from that old trauma that we didn't have the opportunity to choose at the time. But now as a team, we can and will and have the power to make choices about how we are bringing meaning into our lives each and every day. How are we setting ourselves free? Now, it'll be a very interesting journey to see how these ideas are and energies are reflected at the microcosm or the macrocosm level, rather, because a lot of our quote-unquote freedoms are constructs of higher authority, 
you know, these these groups that we've given authority to, the governments, the, the education systems, uh, administrative systems inside of hierarchies. You know, there's we give our power away to so many people each and every day, even people inside of our household. I give my power away to my husband and kids all the time. You know, it's like I, I'm always having to, to be vigilant about what choice are you making right now? And are you at peace with that? Because you don't have to be commandeering, you know, you don't have to be aggressive. This doesn't have to be violent. A violent acquisition of power is not what we're talking about. We're talking about making choices that you can be at peace with. Because let's face it, sometimes we're faced with a bunch of choices and none of them are really optimal. You know, it's, you know, we can be faced with lots of choices, none of which we want to to make. But you still get to choose. It is still your choice of which path you take. And then how you choose to see what you do from there is also your choice. So it is coming into places now where we are understanding that we get to create our own truth inside of this in so many ways. And the collection of information, the access to new knowledge, I think is going to skyrocket. We're going to get the opportunity to see things we've never seen, know things we've never known, and it might take some time for some of us to actually absorb that. You know, it's like being allowing our ears and eyes and, and minds to evolve to a point where we can actually perceive these things. You know, I mean, we can look at that even on a physical level of the body. I mean, there are, there's a whole range of color that currently our eyes aren't able to see because of our anatomy doesn't mean that they don't exist doesn't mean that it's not there these are frequencies that are out there but as we start to evolve we will be able to perceive more on all level of being able to access information and knowledge through our senses as we move toward a new level of truth a new way of being new ways of finding balance new ways of cracking into the concept of freedom and setting ourselves free and finding meaning in each and every day of our lives by choosing joy. We will be able to evolve in 2021 in in ways that it was prophesized for so long. And it's a very exciting time. And I think that when we start to really think about the communities that have come together, especially through 2021, the people that have gathered into your life, the ones that we've had to say goodbye to, to make room for new ones to come in, this is all very purposeful. It is, it's building the tribes that we need, the communities that we need to rely on one another, to elevate ourselves to where we're going to go next and to really start to know that part of your ability to grow and evolve is allowing yourself to be vulnerable enough to ask for help and this isn't just about being a godly being that gives and gives and gives we have to understand that the duality accepting the duality of all of it is where we find balance which means that you also need to be open to receive as much as you are willing to give and vice versa and so finding joy inside of all of those transactions and each and everything you do during the day to give and receive to yourself as well This is where we will keep ourselves going for ourselves and for each other. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be very simple in nature. So I know I could go on forever um, with with these kinds of things, but trying to keep it as simple as I can uh, inside of these very existential concepts, I know, and trying to communicate it in a way that made sense for me. And... So I I hope that each and every one of you um, that listen, take the time to listen to this, which I'm grateful for each of you, that you can find something in this that resonates on a level of truth for you. And I'm looking forward to being able to put together some really great uh, resources. Um, So I'm hoping that you will stay with me this year. Uh, Follow and subscribe to the blog here 
if you don't mind taking a moment and just rating uh, the, the, the podcast and uh, letting me know what you want to hear about. Uh, and, and we will provide um, through the wonderful networks that are available to us with all of this beautiful information. So stay tuned this month. I'm going to have some great people lined up for the Soul Tribe Saturdays. And come see me on Instagram uh, where I'm going to be trying to do a little bit more of my Insta Live interaction. But looking forward to championing this year with all of you. Uh, sending you so much love and so many blessings um for 2021 and until the next time light and blessings and love to all of you thank you for tuning in and listening to soul speak i'm jenny israel medical intuitive energy healer spiritual activator counselor and teacher you can learn more by following me on facebook or instagram at jenny israel cpc that's jenny israel and then the letter c PC. If you would like to receive more messages from Spirit directly to your mailbox, visit JennyIsrael.com, scroll down to the bottom, and subscribe to my newsletter. You can also contact me through my website or social media to set up a one-on-one session or to check out my upcoming spiritual development classes. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please help support my show by giving it a five-star review in Apple Podcasts. Spirit and I will speak to you again soon. Blessings and light to all.